Let me tell you about a story. Now we met at Rock Bound about their law enforcement. A right bunch of clowns. How they wear their badge like a plastic crown. How they stick into a story of which they are now bound. It's a rabbit hole, they don't want you to go down. But over in Wisconsin, they're doubling down. Hello everybody, this is Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover the Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey cases, but also as time passes I've been covering other cases such as The Staircase or OJ and many wrongful convictions of youth. Uh, I go over the documents, the photos, the videos, anything case related. So stay tuned because I have many more videos just like the one you're about to see. Hey, how you doing everybody? We're here today to talk a little bit about something with King Kratz that I, I think is quite interesting. Um, what we're gonna what we what we're gonna hear today is a clip, and uh, this this is something that was made available on the Convoluted Brian website. And for those of you who don't know about that website, Convoluted Brian was somebody who was actually looking into and digging up dirt on the Avery and Dassey cases before MAM came out. And when MAM came out and people were looking to go digging into the case, one of the first places they ended up finding was Convoluted Brian. Uh, because there was so much information there. There's things about the German there. For those of you who are curious about the German you're hearing about, he was the one that originally was digging up most of that information about the German. Uh, just a lot of information there at Convoluted Brian, including this that we're going to hear here today. Um, this, what we're going to hear today, is basically hearing all of the all of the all of the manipulative tricks and all of the deceptive tricks and every every um you know trick at creating misdirection and, and confusion that is in ken kratz's bag we're pretty much going to see it right here in this clip we're going to see every single dirty little trick that he that he is willing to try and pull um to to deflect anything um that he finds unpleasant so this clip, I think, is very, very defining about Ken Kratz. Um, it, it, in my mind, it really invalidates anything that he says. So, in, and when I say that, that means anytime he tries to speak about this case, he should not be taken seriously. Because he cannot be taken seriously. The, him and the truth have, have what I call a very complicated relationship. Um... And I'll just leave it at that. So we'll move into it now and you'll see where this reporter who gets the information about the sexting that Ken Kratz had been doing and, and went and talked to one particular victim and saw the police report, I believe it was, about it. And he comes to Ken Kratz to get Ken Kratz's take on it. And the way that Ken Kratz acts and responds is just quite interesting to say the least so here we go i'll see you in a minute after it's done and what is it that stephanie would like to do about this i'm asking i'm asking you is was this appropriate i'm not going to comment on that okay what do, you, do you regret sending these messages i'm not going to comment on that what would stephanie like to do about this are you unwilling to answer that question she, I mean, she told me that uh, she she feels that it's a double standard. She said if, uh, you know, an average person out there that sent messages like this, she, she believes it was sexual harassment, uh, they'd be out of a job. She feels like you've, uh, you know, you're not going to be charged criminally. You did nothing criminally wrong. Um, did she say I did anything professionally, ethically wrong? Yeah. She thinks I did? Yeah. Did, does she recall getting a response from OLR? I, that's I was going to ask you what 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 is. I'm sorry, you didn't answer that. Does she recall getting a response from OLR? I, I I don't know the answer to that question. You're telling me that she didn't tell you that OLR said there was no violation. Okay. Is that what you're telling me? The OLR that's, wouldn't tell me that. Did Stephanie tell you that? No, she didn't. Okay. OLR, um, well. And, and and that's the point because that's the confidential part because as you know I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you generally and hypothetically what OLR does okay. if OLR receives a complaint and if OLR finds that it's not even worthy of um, an investigation um, 
then OLR not only lets everybody involved know uh, about that, uh, but they also... Is there a reason you're taking pictures of me? Yeah, this is a news event. No, it, this isn't an event, Ryan. This is a non-news story, okay? And I would prefer that you not take any pictures of me. If OLR finds that there's no violation, it's confidential. You know that. No lawyer can tell you about this. You know that. Whoever fed no. this story to you, whoever fed this story is. to you, has a personal agenda. You know that. You know you're being used. I, you, I, I do not know that. And who, you know who fed you the story, Ryan? Let, let's I, see how honest you're going to be with me. Public records. I have. Who I have the fed, police report. Who asked you to look message. at this? Who asked you to look at I it? I have public documents. Who asked you I, to look at it, Ryan? I, we don't reveal our sources. Yeah, why? I have public. Are documents. you going to be honest with me, Ryan? You going to tell me who fed you this story and wanted a personal agenda advanced? Are you going to tell me that? Are you going to tell me that? No, no one fed me anything. I'm a reporter. I find out about things. Nobody fed you this story. Nobody said. You should look at Chilton and a, a case from a year ago, just out of the blue. When you talked to DOJ last Friday and you quoted them in your story about the stem cell case, and that's the day you learned about this, that's not just a coincidence, right? Just It's not a coincidence that all of a sudden this comes up. I, I Go ahead. I want to hear I how honest you're going to be. DOJ all the time. I don't... It, the story is not about me. I'm not a public official. I'm not a. I'm not a prominent. I asked you, and we're on the record. District attorney. Did any of this <laughs> come from interview. DOJ? Was it was it fed you by DOJ at all? I, I told what, you. I, I was it or I not? Have public Ryan? documents. I'm not going to reveal any sources. Why won't you tell me whether DOJ fed you this? Whether you think that this is a I told you, personal I embarrassing attach? I want to know if they fed you the story and told you to look into it. That's what I asked you. And you're sitting here and you won't answer me. I don't have to. I'm and, not a public. Okay. I'm so not. I'm going to answer, by the way, hear your answer. You're going to hear a lot of those that I don't have to answer that. I am going to give you the OLR okay. that there was no violation. Okay. Um, if you're going to do a story, you yeah. can decide whether or not you are going to include that in Absolutely. your story. I will. Yeah. That was one of my one of my questions. That's was perfect. What the status of all that is? I can't believe, and I you can put this on the record. Uh, I I don't know who wants you to do this non-story. It wasn't Stephanie. I'm telling you that right now. Stephanie didn't want you. Didn't contact you in Madison, Wisconsin, to do this story. She spoke to me. She, she spoke to you after you got her address and after you found out where she lived. And she's still clearly upset. Mr. Foley, there's only one other agency that knows about this. If you want to sit there and lie to me, lie to me. I'm not you told me on the phone, obviously not anybody from DOJ. If you want to lie to me, go ahead, Mr. Foley. I didn't tell you that. I said I don't reveal... You said obviously I not. Documents. I asked you if DOJ fed this to you. You said obviously not. Wrote it down that you said obviously not. You want to lie to me, Mr. Foley? I'm not lying to anyone. Okay. I'm going to ask you again. Did DOJ feed you this story? <laughs> no. Did, I told you. Did no. you speak to either Mr. Koch, I got, I got Mr. It. Van Hollen, Mr. Potter, or anybody from DOJ, and did they ask you to look into this story? I, are you going to answer that question? Are you going to give me your side of the story? Because I'm not being interviewed here. I'm not are you going to answer that question? I'm a reporter. I don't have to. I told you. I, I've talked to the victim. I have the I have the police report from Kakana. I have the text messages. You're willing to be how used, this, Mr. How? Foley. You're willing well, that, to why to, I come up here to for for them to. Ad I'm getting. Are, your are you on control. DOJ's payroll? I'm getting your. Sentence. Are you willing to advance their public or professional or uh, political agenda? Is that what you're here for? I'm here to get your side of the story. It's an agenda, Mr. Foley. You know that. You're advancing somebody's personal agenda, and you're cool with that. You're okay with that. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I, you are so cool with that I, from a year ago that you think this is news because they say, Hey, Ryan, why don't you look into this case? This is something sweet. Maybe we can divert it from what's going on here in DOJ. Maybe you won't look at the stem cell stuff. Maybe whatever. Why don't you go look at Ken Kratz and, and dig this thing up? where nobody, without being fed the entire story, would have access to that. 
Don't deny that. Explain why this is not a story, sir. You you are you because are there is no criminal violation right. and there is no OLR violation. But was this appropriate behavior? I'm not answering that question. Well, OLR says it was not a violation. Well, that's the not answer. Being I'm a giving violation you. is different than you know being something that. That's the answer I'm giving you. Okay. It was not a violation. Okay. I'm going to see the guts you have if you're going to say who fed you this story in in, in the story. <laughs> Who asked you to look into it? <laughs> it's going to be... It, it's hilarious. Now, um, now that I know what kind of reporter you are and that you're willing to be used, that will dictate the rest of this interview. Go ahead. Um, Is it Mr. Van Hollen's political agenda? You, Is that who, who wants to be advanced here? I'm going to ask them, by the way, if they, if they released this... Confidential information. I'm going to ask them. I told them. you. All, I have the, all I have. I, I called the Kakana Somebody police. told you about this, Mr. That's Foley. That's a public record, the Kakana Somebody police. Somebody told... Kakana called you? They, I didn't say they called me. I said they released the information. Somebody to told you about it, Reporters, Mr. Foley. We find out about things all the time. I've been a reporter for six years in the state. I've covered your cases before. I've, really? What have you learned about me, Mr. Foley? About me and crime victims? What have you learned about me? Well, I know. That I treat crime victims like this? Is that what you learned? These messages, it looks it, like that. Is that, that's what you've learned about me and crime victims? I, you, you haven't learned that I've been well, the, the chairman of the Crime Victims Rights Board, that for 15 years uh, I've not only advocated for, but I wrote the law on crime victims in Wisconsin. Right. You didn't learn about that. So Yeah, I did. So you would embarrass me personally and professionally despite the findings of OLR, because you want to advance somebody else's political agenda. You will do that, right? That's what you're saying. Whoever fed this to you, garnering it's favor just, with them is, is more... a story, why are you so worried that I'm going to write about it? Because it's my reputation, and once the genie's out of the bottle, right. despite OLR looking into it and saying, there's no basis for a violation, when that genie leaves the bottle... Mm -hmm. Most reputable reporters say, I'm not reporting it because OLR says there's no violation. Most reputable reporters do that. Not ones that are willing to be on somebody else's payroll or agenda or advance their I'm paid agenda. by the Associated Press, the world's okay. largest news organization. Right. I've written, I've covered politics in the state. Well, I'm curious. Let's see the OLR report. What On what basis did they? You don't get to find? see that. Ask OLR for it. They don't. They, ask, they, I did. They ask they Stephanie Grohl for it. Van Grohl. She has it. Ask her for it. Ask her for the report that says there's no violation. Ask her for that. She has it. You must have asked her. You must have asked her. Didn't wasn't this reported to OLR? And what was the response? You sat here and lied and said, "Gee, I didn't get that from her," but. You must have asked for that. You're a reporter, right? That'd be the first question out of your mouth. Didn't you no. know that there was no violation, Stephanie? Didn't you know that when you reported this that there was no violation? Yes, Mr. Foley, there was no violation. But because you contacted me, I've got to make a statement. Because somebody in Madison wants you to dig into this. Um, I it sickens me, Mr. Foley, because, because, let me just tell you why, and I'm not being mean, but because this has been investigated by two different agencies right. who both found no violation. And that's why I'm coming up here to get your side of the story. I'm oh. glad that you're pointing this out. D don't, well, right, don't, not, don't, don't soft talk me. I'm not soft okay? talking you. Okay. Don't say that you want my side of the story because you've decided to already run the story where most reputable reporters would not run the story to preserve the reputational interests of the lawyers when OLR says there's no violation. You get that concept, of course, that when it's investigated and they say there's no violation, that you don't do the hatchet story because you don't do it because it tries to preserve the reputational interests of lawyers that cooperate and there's no basis for a violation. That's why those stories aren't ever done. But somebody wants you to do it. Somebody wants you so badly to do it that they fed you all of those facts. They won't confirm it on the record.
because they are cowards. Will they confirm it on the record, Mr. Foley? No. Why? Because DOJ and their lawyers, which, let's just say hypothetically, let's say hypothetically that DOJ during this investigation said, we assure you that we will not release this publicly. Let's assume they hypothetically said that. Now let's assume they need you. Let's assume they need some publicity for something. And then let's assume they fed this story to you. You want to use whatever word you want. Let's assume they fed this story to you, despite those assurances. What does that mean to you, Mr. Foley? Anything? Obviously not. It's not you. It's not your family. It's not your reputation. Right? It's not your reputation in small Chilton. We're not talking about Milwaukee or Madison. In small Chilton where something that just the allegation of can ruin a local prosecutor. You don't care about that, and here's why you don't. Because now that you know that there's no violation, now that you know OLR so there's no violation, you're still predisposed to write a story. Are they, did you send these text messages? I'm not answering that question. Okay. Because that's news. That Really? According to, according to who? According to the Associated Press. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so that means... Is it okay for a prosecutor... I'm not answering, is it okay for? Well, I'm, well, I'm answering whether OLR believes well, that's a, a violation. Between, uh, there's a difference between a technical violation or a criminal violation who, who, and appropriate... Who behavior. told you that? I'm saying that. I just know that I'm a reporter. Why are you so worried about the story getting out if there's no, nothing here? Oh, come on. Why are you so worried about an OLR violation having been alleged and they find no violation, why, why would OLR keep it confidential? Don't you think they're worried about reputational interests of the lawyers too? I'm worried about it because of my reputational interest. I'm worried about it because of my 25 years as a prosecutor. That's why I'm worried about this story. I'm worried that a reporter would be willing to be fed a story like this and, and go with it. I'm worried that you didn't get this from Miss Van Grohl. I'm worried about this young woman. I'm wondering if you're going to name her, by the way. If you're going to use yeah, her name. She gave an interview on the record. She is willing to give her name out there. Yes. Did she tell you how many text messages she sent me? I have those too. Good. So she told you she sent 23 text messages. That's many one-word answers. Uh... Uh, right. Okay. What's your next question, Mr. Foley? Do you have one? Now, um, yeah, I, I have learned a lot about you. You mentioned your past as a uh, you know crime crime victims advocate, uh, uh, chairman, chairman, crime victims rights board. Yeah, absolutely, uh, mm -hmm. you, you did help uh, establish that. Uh, Nineteen ninety eight, I believe. I've, I was the only chairman since ninety eight between ninety eight right. and December of oh nine. Have you stepped down from that board? I resigned from that board in December of oh nine. Okay, why did you do that? I'm not. Answering that, I'll give you the, I will give you the correspondence, my resignation correspondence okay. from them that I will release. Okay. That I'm happy to release. Okay. Um, uh, why Why did you step aside from the Shannon Connets or prosecution? Uh, there was a conflict of interest. Okay. What was that conflict? I don't have to answer, nor will I. And you might want to add, as you're writing things down, um, because my understanding from um, Supreme Court Rule 22, um, excuse me just a second, let me just grab this. Supreme Court Rule 22.40, subsection 1, that these matters and any investigation there and remains confidential. Yeah, but you're free to speak about it. If I wanted to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But and, and other people are free to speak about it. Other people? Well, you know, person who made the complaint. Let's see who's going on the rep. Okay. That's, I'm just saying. So I, I'd like to see so if Ms. Van Grohl or somebody 
else, other people, are going to speak about this. Tell me what quotes you have about the OLR complaint. Do you have any quotes about that? I have other than a lot from, from me? You. Um, and I'm hoping to actually look you at it. You have a lot from me. Well, saying that OLR cleared you, yeah. No, saying that the matter remains confidential and telling you that hypothetically, if they found that there was no violation, that they would not verify or release any information. That's what I told you. You said OLR, you said repeatedly that OLR found no violation. We're done. If you want to trick me into I'm saying... I'm not tricking, here's, I, I have it on stage. You're, you're using me for the confirmation. I, I am not using you for the because confirmation. Because you have nobody else that will confirm that there is an OLR complaint. Will you? Or do you? I'm not, I'm not. Do you have somebody that will confirm that there's an OLR complaint? No, I don't, because OLR won't say that. So when I asked you, are you using me to confirm that, and you sat there and said no. I said the case, the, the whole overall case. I know what I'm dealing with, Mr. Foley. I see it. Okay? I see advancing a political agenda when I see it, when it sits in what, front of... What's the political agenda? I told you about this, Mr. Foley. That's the political agenda. Follow it. Follow it back to who told you that you should write a story about this. You're not that dumb, Mr. Foley. You've been doing this long enough. What, what's the political... You've been doing this long enough. I don't understand what the political agenda... I don't either. But you should figure it out. You should figure out why DOJ wants you to write a story about this. Figure it out. How hard is that? Did you ask that question when they told you? When, when whoever leaked this to you, when they told you, did you ask why? Why? What agenda? How does this help you if I run this? Did you ask that question? You know what you're saying to me? No. Because you don't care. You don't care why. You don't care why they wanted you to write this story. You should. You should care why. You should know why you're being used. I, I'm not being used. Um, you should ask that question, shouldn't you, Mr. Foley? You should ask that question. Why do you want me to run this on Ken Kratz? What personally happened between Ken and J.B. Van Hollen? What personally happened? That they want to personally, not professionally, personally embarrass them. What personally happened? Do you know, Mr. Foley? Do you know the history? Do you know why J.B. Van Hollen wants this run? Do you? I don't know if J.B. Van Hollen wants this run. I don't know what the, what is the history? Right. Nobody in that office, this is off the record, nobody in that office can shit. All right, so you guys, you know, you listen to that, you can obviously make your own kind of discernments about it. But here's the thing: do you really, you remember at the beginning of this when 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 the reporter was making the you know was telling Ken about what he had basically been told or found out and and spoke to the victim and stuff, and Ken Kratz was like all about how OLR found no found no violation, OLR found no violation, OLR found no violation, and then. At the end there, the guy was saying, well, yeah, I had, you know, you confirmed that ORLR said no violation. And and suddenly Ken is like, oh, no, I no, that's not what I said. I said, uh, I said, um, theoretically, uh, OLR found no violation or something along those lines. And it's just like he's totally trying to walk back what he said. This is quintessential Ken Kratz. He he lies first and then tries to walk it back later. And and he, yeah, it's just, this is one of the times where you can see, you, you, you can see Ken Kratz pulling every single dirty trick he has out of the bag against this reporter. I mean, it's, it's just phenomenal to watch, to be perfectly honest. Uh, so... I hope you guys all, you know, found that to be very interesting. Um, and, and, and when I go live later, we can talk about this more. I'm sure many of you, especially those who had never heard it before, I'm sure are going to have quite a bit to say or questions about it and stuff. So 
we'll see you guys later on during the live. And uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and we'll see you.